Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to another Moneymaker Monday. And uh, today we're talking about uh, a great topic. I think for a lot of people, uh, they've been uh, maybe thinking about how they're going to approach this uh, in 2018. And that topic is talking to your children about money. Um, one of the things that um, is very vital to setting the tone for your kids to live a life of abundance, live a life of prosperity, um, live a life where uh, I won't say without fear because fear is always going to be there, but living a life where they're willing to do it anyway, living a life where they're willing to get out on the skinny branches of life because they're worth it, because they know that um, they have a purpose in life because they're not afraid of failure. And um, we have this opportunity as parents to really set that tone and in many cases start to break some of the cycles that have been in your family. Uh, maybe some uh, of you listening on today are going to be from backgrounds of poverty, from backgrounds where uh, things didn't necessarily go as planned, uh, and that's just life. And at the same time, it doesn't have to be like that for you anymore, and it doesn't have to be like that for your children. So we're going to talk about specifically ten topics, and we could we could spend the whole night uh, we could spend the whole night talking about uh, what to tell your children about money. But we're going to cover ten topics, um, ten specific topics that I think are the key, like ten major major bullets. So I hope that. Um, for you guys that are interested in this topic, that you are that you have a pen and pad, uh, that you're willing to take notes. Uh, I am a note taker. I love taking notes. And um, I feel like uh, somebody once told me the best way to um, remember and embody um, an experience, like in a seminar uh, setting, is uh, one is experientially. And two is through note taking, being able to actually write notes and actually reread them. Um, so reading your notes within 24 to 48 hours is so vital. So uh, for all you that like to take notes, I'm a note taker too. So I'm going to ask you guys to uh, pull out a pen and pad, pull out your smart device, pull out your laptop, and take, be willing to take some notes. Be willing to be a student and learn and um, you know, I, I think that that's the uh, the greatest thing is when we're able to humble ourselves to actually take advice um, and coaching. This is my daughter, by the way. This is Zella, who a lot of you know, Zella from the Seven Seas, my next Facebook superstar. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Just want to give you a real quick sneak preview. Next week, we are talking about cryptocurrency and uh, specifically Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum, Red Coin, lots of different coins, and uh, you know this uh, Bitcoin f uh, thing is taking on a life of its own. And whether you're a non-believer or you're a, you know, a believer, this doesn't seem to be like a middle with Bitcoin. Seems like you either believe that this thing is taking over or you think it's a hoax. But regardless of where you fall in the chain, no pun intended, um, I think it's important to know the trends that are uh, impacting society. So um, for all of you that know about crypto and all of you that know about uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and some of these other coins, these altcoins that are coming out or are out, um, we're going to be talking about that next week. All right. So back to the topic at hand, uh, Moneymaker Monday, we're talking about what to say to your children, the top 10 things, uh, top 10 points that I'm going to bring up today. And uh, point number one, we're going to get started, is really uh, kind of like a rever role reversal, uh, which is basically that topic one, point one, is be the example. And what do I mean when I say be the example? Being the example is basically meaning that we have it that parenting is about our children, that, you know, uh, it's what they need, it's what we need to fix about them, um, it's what uh, they are doing wrong that they need to correct. But in reality, parenting is not about them. It's, it's really about you. And uh, each and every one of us as a parent gets to be the example that we want to set for our children. 
Um, children are not stupid. Children are not uh, easily uh, dupable where you think that you're going to get away with telling your kids to not do something that you're not willing to do. So if you smoke cigarettes and you don't want your children to smoke cigarettes, that's not going to fly. You know, or if you want your children to be uh, good with money, but you're not good with money, then that's, that's not going to really work that well. So we got to be the example. If you, we want our kids to be less entitled, then we've got to be less entitled. If we want our children to be less lazy, then we've got to be less lazy. If we want our uh, children to have more gratitude for what they do have, then we, we've got to have that gratitude. We've got to express to our children and understand that our, our children are always watching us. Our kids are watching us regardless of what you think. You know, some of us parents, we think we're real slick. We think that we're real uh, smart about it and that our children don't understand. But in reality, our kids understand a lot more than we think. Um, they know us very well, just like we know them very well. And uh, I think one of the biggest things to pass down to our children, uh, as an example, and I just mentioned some about not being lazy, not being uh, entitled, and so on and so forth. One of the big ones is integrity. And uh, this is one that I really try to instill in the kids is um, for me to have integrity with them. So honoring my word. If I say I'm going to pick them up from school at 305, that I'm there at 305. If I tell them that I'm going to take them to their music class at four o'clock that I take them there, making sure that I honor what I say. And if I don't actually do what I actually said I'm going to do, being willing to clean it up, being willing to talk to them and clean it up and say, hey, listen, I know that I said I'd be there at 345 and it's 415 right now. You know, I'm sorry about that. I, I understand that that has an impact. And uh, what you can count on me is that, you know, moving forward, I'm not going to do that again or I'm going to let you know. You know, being able to being willing to humble yourself to clean things up and have a clean relationship, a workable relationship. Um, and, and what you do when you do that is you create that in them. You instill that in them that when they go out and become adults, that they're able to do the same and take responsibility uh, for all of it. You know, um, so. Uh, having integrity. Just to give you one quick example, I have a friend, and this is this is a situation that maybe some of you can relate to. I have a friend who owes people money, all right, and maybe some of you can relate to that. This particular person owes not just one person money, but owes several people money. And the thing about that is, the people that are owed money all know each other. So inevitably, human nature. All of these people talk. Um, and they're like, did so-and-so let you know when they were going to pay you back? No. Did they let you know when they're going to pay me back? No. And then those people who are owed money have children that are friends with this person's children. And all of a sudden it becomes this massively awkward situation. Awkward why? Obviously it's an embarrassing thing for people to... Uh, uh, owe money sometimes, you know, people get weird about money. But in addition to that, um, when you're not clear with your agreements that, hey, listen, I know that I owe you a thousand bucks, but um, I can't pay you right now, but this is what I can do. Um, I could pay you $300 a month until I get that clear. Would that be workable? And if, if you're not willing to get out of the, you know, not put your head in the sand, not bury your head in the sand and clean up your messes. Your children are watching that, especially on a financial basis. So having integrity, restoring integrity, being able to apologize, being able to say you're sorry, being able to work out new agreements with your children and around your children with other people while your children are watching is so vital for them to, so that you could be the example for them as to how to carry yourself as an adult. So that's number one, be the example. Uh, whatever it is that you want your children to instill, you get to be that. Or as Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in the world. Well, your world starts with your household. Your world starts with your children. That's your world, and that's the change that you get to see first and foremost. So with that, we're going to move on to number two. And this is a big one, and this is one that you know, I think every parent wants their children to do better than them. That's like human nature. So number two for me is earning money. Earning money. Now, what do I mean by earning money? Specifically, a lot of us um, have this mentality that life works linearly. 
that you work a certain amount of hours, you get paid a certain amount of money. If you work extra hours, then you make extra money. But what I teach my children, and you can take that for what it's worth, is having your children learn how to become more valuable uh, rather than working more hours, being willing to be more valuable. What do I mean by more valuable? Being more marketable. So I always tell parents, be willing to work on yourself harder than you do at your job. I'm going to repeat that. Be willing to work harder on yourself than you do at your job. So I think that uh, one of the greatest opportunities we have is when we get home. Um, and uh, I like to call it the mad scientist laboratory. When we're home and we're relaxing and you know maybe we're putting on the Netflix or we're watching the football or the basketball game. You know who you are and we all fall into that. Um, we, fall, we all fall into that on some level. Um, and at the same time, these are the opportunities where you get to work, like I say, in your laboratory in becoming more valuable. Uh, to the extent that you can become more valuable, you can make more money at your job. So what do I mean by making more valuable? That's going to that's gonna change according to what profession you're currently in. Maybe it's uh, getting a new certification or uh, learning a new software program, maybe learning C++ or learning a new language, you know, uh, learning Spanish, uh, learning uh, Russian, learning Chinese, Mandarin or Cantonese, uh, taking a leadership training. So these are just examples of um, things that you could do to make yourself more marketable so that when you go to your job, you go to, you go to wherever your career is established, people see that. Your boss sees that. Your boss's boss sees that. And all of a sudden, you become sought after. You know, um, that's one of the things that I think children need to understand is it's not about working more. It's about it's not working about working harder. It's about working smarter. And, you know, if you're going to work harder, work harder on yourself than you do at your job. Work harder on you. Become more valuable. Become more marketable. And you will be sought after. You will get the best projects. You will you will get the best freelance job opportunities. Um, and ultimately you'll be nailing down your future. You know, that's, 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 uh, that's one of the things. And, you know, before we move on off this topic, also teaching your kids to be independent, let them do their own projects, let them learn from their own mistakes. Um, I think that nowadays with universities, with, uh, with corporate jobs, with the corporate world, it's not about necessarily, uh, what you know, uh, Companies want to know what you've done. They want to know what you've worked on. And uh, they want to know uh, what projects you've been on, what you've been a part of. And uh, to the extent that you can go out there and, you know, um, go out there on the, on, the, on the real battlefield and even get some scars, get some scars in the process. Be willing to roll up your sleeves and make a mess, fall down, fail, get back up. I think that that's one of the biggest things we can teach our children is to risk your brilliance, being willing to get out in the uncomfortable and, and do it anyway, uh, again, because their life is worth it. So that's what I got to say about earning money, being willing to work harder on yourself than you do at your job. Be more valuable. And with that, uh, we go from earning money to number three, spending money. Um, and this is a killer, especially in the United States of America. I think, you know, we live in such a consumer market in America and, you know, children grow up entitled and uh, with a lack of understanding of uh, how hard it is to make, make a dollar, how hard it is to earn a dollar. And I think one of the things that we can teach our children is buying appreciating assets versus depreciating assets. Um, most of the assets that children buy, whether it's sneakers or iPods or whatever the case may be, these are, these are depreciating assets. These are assets that are not going to benefit your children. Now again, being the example, if you're out there buying Louis Vuitton bags, it's gonna be pretty difficult for you to talk about this, about investing in appreciating assets. But you know, one of the things, just as an idea that you could do with one of your kids when, on their birthday, like on their on their 10th birthday or their 11th birthday, uh, you, can, you can say, hey listen, I bought you uh, a share of Amazon. I, I bought you a share of Apple. Why did I buy you a share of Apple? Because I feel like Apple's gonna go up because of this, 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 and this. 
you know, pointing out to your kids and setting the context for investment at a very early age. You know, there was a a stat, one of my, uh, I was talking to a financial advisor about uh, life insurance and we were talking specifically about um, how much a person can earn in life insurance like towards their later years if they invest early. And he showed like the chart of like if you started at the age of 25, how much money you'd have to retire with versus if you started at the age of 40, um, and invested, let's say, 300 bucks a month and how much money you'd be left with. And it's, it's literally astronomical. You would think that, oh, 10 years wouldn't make a big difference, but it's, it's crazy how much of a difference it makes. So um, teaching children about investing in appreciating assets versus depreciating assets. And again, being the example to do just that. Um, you know, Each and every one of us gets to look internally at our lives. Do we own our own homes? Are we paying rent? Um, do we invest in our stock portfolio? Are we doing anything um, to improve our situation? Are we buying, um, are, are we uh, putting money into our savings account, our 401k, whatever the case may be? Or are we spending that money frivolously on vacations? Which, hey, listen, I, I love a great vacation like anybody else. But I also am conscious and I teach my children to be conscious of the fact that as much as you're spending, you got to be conscious of what you're also saving and what you're also investing. So teaching your ch children that spending also means investing, appreciating assets versus depreciated assets, being willing to draw a line and put appreciating assets on one side and depreciating the other and look at your budget, look at your monthly expenses and look at your life and put a percentage on how much of your assets actually go towards something that appreciates in value and build something versus gets washed away and just you know vaporized and then you gotta spend it again next month. So um, spending habits is a big one. Moving on to number four. So we've covered three so far. We talked about being the example. We talked about earning money, becoming more valuable instead of working longer hours, working smarter, not harder, working on yourself harder than you do at your job. And then we talked about spending, depreciating assets versus appreciating assets versus uh, talking about investing money versus just spending money frivolous, frivolously. Uh, number four is tithing. And this is a big one uh, for me to teach our children about giving back. So, you know, whether you're a Christian or a Hindu or a Muslim or a Buddhist or whatever uh, denomination you subscribe to, or if you're atheist, um, even if you're atheist, you know, being willing to give to charities, being willing to give to people, um, tithing is a big thing because what tithing essentially does is it teaches your children about abundance. See, if your child is willing to give away his or her money, it's teaching them a lesson about abundance, that there's plenty of money out there and that I have something to offer. I have something to give to another human being. Um, so tithing can happen in a number of ways. It could be money, uh, where they're actually giving money to a charity. Or what I love to do is teach your children about uh, like giving back in terms of service, maybe having them work in a soup kitchen, uh, feed homeless people, give out presents during Christmas time to the less fortunate, visiting shelters, visiting children's hospitals. There's so many different things that we can do to tithe, to give back to our community, to give back to people that are less fortunate, and really to reinforce this battle between abundance and scarcity. Because you either are on one side of the line or you're on the other side. You're either living in abundance, that there's plenty out there, there's plenty of great jobs, there's plenty of great work, there's plenty of money, there's plenty of great men, there's plenty of great women, there's plenty of... You either live in plenty or you live in scarcity. What is scarcity? Kill before you're killed. Take before somebody else takes. Living a life of fear, living a life of I got to get mine before somebody else does. So... Uh, to the extent that we can tithe, to the extent that we can set the context of abundance um, is, is such a valuable thing um, so that your, your children live in a sense of gratitude and a sense of peace when they wake up in the morning. They can actually uh, look to, at the universe and, you know, whether they subscribe to God or the universe, whatever the case may be, they can speak to their higher self and say, use me for what it is that you would have me do. Use me for what it is that you would have me uh, accomplish today, fulfill today. And that, and, and that experience, that empowerment, that sense of empowerment that they're guided by angels, that they have angels to the left and right of them and that anything 
anything is possible on this planet uh, in, and, and that there are people that will benefit from their success. Uh, we get to teach that at a very early age through, th through tithing, that others will benefit from your success. So your success, there's a lot weighing on your success. It's not just about you and you paying your bills, but it's about others that win when you win. Being able to close your eyes and see who are the benefactors of my success. So for each kid, um, when they're scared, when they're uh, afraid to get out of the, their comfort zone, they'll be more inclined to do so because of other people, not because of their success, but because of the success of others when they succeed. So that's number four is tithing. Um, uh, number five, this is a big one for me. Number one, maybe not number one, but one of the biggest ones for me is be willing to be your own boss. Um, I've had the privilege of being my own boss for my entire adult life. Um, I am literally unemployable. I do not uh, want a job, never wanted a job. And uh, for me, that's important. It's important for me to uh, be able to live a life like that where I call the shots. Uh, not that I don't have responsibilities to my clients, to my vendors, to people that I'm responsible to. But at the same time, um, I get to live a life that has a lot of freedom and independence in it where you know, if I want to go to my daughter's uh, one o'clock uh, pottery uh, showcase with all the moms in her school, I get to do that. I get to be the guy. And, and, and I've, been that, I've been the guy at all my kids' things. And it's the coolest thing because I am my own boss. Um, so for any of you that have an aspiration to be your own boss, uh, remember that it's not just about uh, 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 aspiring to be your own boss, but teaching your children the same. And I'm going to tell you something. This is a stat. This is real. The stat is real. There are less jobs than ever before, but there is more work than ever before. Less jobs, more work. So how does that jive? How does that square out? You can't square that out, can you? The, the difference maker, the reason why there's less jobs than ever before but more work than ever before is because nowadays companies don't want to people, have people on their books. They don't want to have people uh, on their books so that they have to pay payroll tax. They'd rather outsource the work and right now is the era of the freelance master. So teaching your kids to be their own boss, being the top of their industry. If, you, if they're, if they're going to be a computer coder, be the best computer coder. If you're going to be a photographer, be the best photographer. Be the most sought after. Um, to the extent that you are the top of your industry, you're going to get all the great jobs. Teaching your children to uh, not depend on their four-year degree, not depend on a boss taking care of them, not depend on a company taking care of them. Being willing to be your own boss, being willing to be the the freelance master that gets all the great work, that gets all the great gigs and calls the shot, lives the life uh, that they want to live. I, I think it's, it's one of the biggest, uh, biggest privileges um, is to be your own boss and just you know, be able to be anywhere. It's, it's almost like having six Saturdays and a Sunday, really. And I, sometimes I still pinch myself 20 years later that I've been my own boss and I'm amazed at what others have to do for their six figures, seven figures, what they have to do, what they have to be willing to eat, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, po company politics, you know, the fact that, you know, you've got a boss and he's got a boss and, you know, all the politics that goes into that where you can't be fully expressed, you can't be yourself. I think that, that one of the greatest things about being your boss, aside from the income, aside from that is the personal freedom that comes with it, the ability to, to just be yourself. You know, be authentically yourself. So um, that's that's important. Now, number six ties to number five. Being your own boss comes with responsibility. So number six is telling your kids about the win-win mentality. Um, that everybody must win in business. If you're going to start your own business, everybody must win. I win equals you win. It's not a I lose con I win you lose context because that's not an example for sustainable success. If you want to teach your children about sustainable success, not to not how to get to the top of the mountain, but but how to stand on top of the mountain, how to st have longevity in the game, how to stay in the game for 20 years, 30 years and develop a reputation as somebody that is good, that somebody that is uh, that helps people, that uh, is humble, even with all his success. 
So that's what's available uh, in uh, teaching your children about the win-win context. Um, uh, basically, you know, this is one of the big things in schools today. I was, I was helping one of my uh, cousins with his uh, college essays, and this is one of the biggest things that I see for children today is colleges want to know what you've done in terms of service. They want to know what you've done in terms of helping others. Do you even have it in your heart? Or is this just, you know, you rocking your SATs and just being this, like, uh, person that can regurgitate information on a test. The world is more complicated than ever before. There's more conflict in this world than ever before. Having leadership skills, having the ability to get both sides to the table that don't agree with one another. You know, we disagree as a society, we disagree more than ever before. I have friends that won't talk to me because of political views. I have friends that won't talk to me because of social views. You know, it's 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 coming to that extent where it's become so tumultuous. So having your children be somebody that can talk to both sides. You know, Dwight Eisenhower once said that a democratic uh, uh, American mind is both liberal and conservative. So we've got to be able to do both. And to the extent that you can create that win-win mentality um, and having uh, the personality to get both sides to the table, that is a skill. That is a true skill that is going to be invaluable uh, moving into the next uh, generation because um, we certainly need that. So that's number six is having that win-win mentality. Number seven, uh, finding your purpose. You know, asking your children, what do you love? What are you passionate about? Have, being willing to have that conversation with them over and over again. What do you love? What are you passionate about? What breaks your heart about the world? What, what would you be willing to sleep in your car for and be uncomfortable for six months? Um, you know, really getting to the essence of what stirs them up and really teaching them that you're, you're here for a reason. You know, uh, your children are not some random event of a romantic occurrence between their mother and father. It's much deeper than that. And if I could share with myself, you know, just my personal opinion about it, you know, I believe that when your child was born that God spoke and that God spoke and, you, and, and there was a need for your, your son or your daughter and that God saw what that need was and then your, your, your son or daughter was conceived, your, your son and daughter came to this earth and they are here on this planet with a particular destiny, not the destiny that you want for them, not the destiny that their father wants for them, but the, the destiny that was chosen, that was anointed upon them. Um, and that's something we don't have any control over. But how beautiful is that? The fact that your child has his own distinct destiny to fulfill on and to the extent that you could be somebody that has them pursue their dreams, pursue their aspirations. I can't think of a, a bigger thing to instill that each and every one of us has a purpose. Instilling that in your child that you have a purpose and you, the game of life is to figure out what your purpose is. Or as Pablo Picasso put it, Pablo Picasso said, the meaning of life is to figure out your gifts, but the purpose of life is to give them away. So who benefits from your gifts? Your gifts are not yours to hold. You are anointed with these gifts, but these gifts are for humanity. So how will you affect humanity? Um, and with that, number eight, and this goes ties in with number seven. Finding your purpose was number seven. Number eight is talking about distractions. Talking about, you know, there's more distractions today than there ever was in society. We live in a more complicated society than ever before where, you know, we're talking about Trump and we're talking about the Kardashians and we're talking about Hillary and we're talking about all these different things that, by the way, have nothing to do with our life purpose, that have nothing to do with, with why you're destined to be here. And yet with all of this distraction, it is so, it is so important to simplify the pursuit. It's so important to teach your children to simplify their pursuit and especially simplify your pursuit during these complex times because these are very complex times. You know, these kids, they have to know what they stand for. Um, to the extent that they can know what they stand for, uh, they're going to be empowered. They're going to live a life of empowerment. Um, I think that uh, kids do drugs because 
They don't know what they stand for. They, kids get bullied because they don't know what they stand for. Kids commit suicide because they don't know what they stand for. So what do you stand for? You know, you get, again, as an, as an example, as a parent, you get to stand for something. What is it that you stand for? What are your cardinal rules? What are the things that don't get to happen around you? What are your deal breakers? And to the extent that you have that, your children will have that. They'll know what they stand for. So learning to instill purpose and also have them avoid the distractions of life. So that's number eight, and that moves me on to number nine, which is repetition. Being willing to talk to your children over and over and over about these things that we've covered today. They say uh, repetition is the mastery of motherhood. Uh, sorry, repetition is the mother of mastery. So again, I'll repeat that. Repetition is the mother of mastery. By continuously instilling this in your children, by continuously talking about integrity, talking about living your purpose, talking about avoiding distractions, talking about all the things that we covered today, that is what, what, what it's going to take. Be willing to have the same conversation over and over. Have it different ways, but have it over. Don't say that, oh, I already talked to my kids about that. Maybe you have to talk to them again about that. Maybe your children are waiting for you to have that conversation again. Um, and, and, and I really believe that. I think on many cases, your children are just waiting for you. They're waiting for you to have the conversation with them about God. They're waiting for you to have the conversation with them about money. They're waiting for you to have the conversation with them about their relationship or about relationships in general. So be willing to be there to have the conversation. Repetition is the motherhood of mastery. And that leads me to my final point, which is number 10, which is know your worth. I think that all of this comes from having self-worth. You know, we live in a world where people feel like they're not good enough, they're not worthy, they're not the right race, they're not the right religion, uh, they're not the right gender. We've got all this trauma from our childhood that's, that's, that needs to be dewired. So to the extent that your children can know their worth, know that they're loved, know that they have angels to the left of them, know that they have angels to the right of them, know that there's, there's a God at the helm that walks beside them and know that they were created not by coincidence, but that they were created for a, a divi with divinity, with a purpose. I think that that's so important that we teach our children you know, to, to not live life on the sales rack of life, not live life on the, the Black Friday sales rack of life. Understand your worth. And, you know, um, it's, it's, it, how much you value yourself is how you're going to ultimately treat yourself. How you value yourself is how you're going to ultimately, ultimately uh, treat your dreams. So, you know, if you, you know, if you've ever valued something in your life, something that was really expensive for you to get and you covet it and it's like maybe it's a piece of, maybe it's an outfit, maybe it's a pair of shoes that you just love and you treat it a certain way because you value it. But if you bought that item on the sales rack, at 60% off on a Black Friday sale, and the damn thing does barely fits you, but you bought it anyway just because it was on sale, you're gonna treat that differently. And to the extent that your children don't value themselves, they're not gonna teach children how to value themselves. So these are the uh, 10 principles that I wanted to cover today, teaching our children um, about all these different things when it comes to money and when it comes to life. Um, I can't think of a greater endeavor than um, being willing to be courageous enough to talk to our children about these things that are going to ultimately set the tone for them, set uh, their ability to, to walk with power, walk with empowerment, know that there is a governing force that's more powerful than them, that is guiding them, that is stirring their stirring up their consciousness, even if they can't feel it on a, on, a, on, a, on a conscious level, that even on a subconscious level, that there is a higher power that's developing them uh, to do something, fulfill on something, fulfill on a calling, on a destiny, um, to the extent that our, our children can be dreamers and, 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 and understand that even their trials and tribulations, even their tough times, even all their struggles are designed for them to be greater. It's that their failures, even their failures, are the greatest catalyst to their greatest invention. Um, so I'm going to end with that and just say that, um, you know, uh, for those of you that 
uh, know who J.K. Rowling is. One of my uh, favorite examples that I can give, J.K. Rowling, when she was 25 years old, she lost her mother. And, you know, she, um, she, uh, the mother didn't even know she was writing the book, Harry Potter. And that death was so painful to her. And at the same time, she was able to take that pain and turn it into Harry Potter's pain as Harry lost his parents in the book. And I say that to you because each and every one of us has a purpose and where in our life are we suffering? Where in our life are we struggling with a certain thing in our life? Try to see where this thing that's happening in your life serves as a lesson in your life to awaken something inside of you, to light the flame inside of you that you get to light up in your life so you can be the example for your children so they can go out there and light up the world. So that's my talk for today. As always, the greatest days of your life ahead lay ahead, not just for you, but for your children, for your children's children. Let's start to set the tone for 2018. Let's go out there and light this world on fire. Let's be willing to make a wet mess. Let's be willing to get on the skinny branches of life. Let's be willing to go out there in the uncomfortable and be comfortable in the uncomfortable and, and be the light of the world because you're the light of your world. I love you, and as always, I'll see you at the top.